Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at subunit 9.10, which is all about cell potential under non-standard conditions. Have your formula sheet with you because you're gonna need it today and let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I wanna remind everybody you know, we've been talking about galvanic cells and we've been calculating cell potentials. And that's, of course, what this variable right here means is the, the cell potential. And I want to remind you that that little degree symbol means standard state conditions. OK, so let's just review what that means. That means we're we're looking at voltages that are being measured with the system at 25 degrees Celsius, any Aqueous solution is at a molarity of one molar. Any gases are at one atm. So the question is, can you have an operating galvanic cell, a battery, if some part of those standard state conditions are not standard state? Like what if the temperature isn't 25 degrees? What if it's 26 degrees? Does that mean that we can't figure out how much voltage is coming out of that battery? No, we can, okay? And we're gonna use an equation which you do not have to memorize. It is on your formula sheet. If you look on your formula sheet at the section that says thermodynamics slash electrochemistry, it is the equation at the very, very bottom. It's called the Nernst equation. And the biggest part of this equation that I want to call your attention to is the fact that there's two variables, E cell. One of them has the degree symbol and one of them does not. So the one with the degree symbol would be what is the cell potential when this cell is running under standard state conditions? And this other E cell is, okay, but one part of the cell, you know, some, some, part of our conditions are not under standard state. So what is this new voltage that we would be getting? Okay, let's talk about these different variables. All right, this capital R, all right, we've seen this before. This is the gas uh, constant. You don't get a choice in which one, which one to use. You need to use 8.314. T is temperature, needs to be in Kelvin. Okay, we've seen lowercase n before. That would be the number of electrons that get transferred in this galvanic cell or whatever it is. Remember, that, is, that number that gets plugged in there is simply the number of electrons that were canceled out when you added your two half reactions together. F is Faraday's constant, given to you on your formula sheet. And then this is, of course, natural log. And Q, this is going you know, a, few units, a few units back. Q is that reaction quotient, products over reactants. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna look at how to use this equation. So using that reaction quotient Q, we can predict what's gonna happen to the voltage of a galvanic cell if some part of the conditions are not under standard state. Now, of course, when we are under standard state, you know, all gases are one atm, all molar solutions are one molar, all aqueous solutions. So when we're under standard state conditions, Q is always equal to one. Remember guys, reaction quotients can only include gases or aqueous things, and they would always be at concentrations or pressures of one. So guys, if you think about it, if this number is equal to one, well, the natural log of one is just zero. So this whole part cancels out, it would just be zero. And so when you're under standard state conditions, we don't even you know, need to deal with that. We're just dealing with standard E cell. Okay, but what we're gonna be looking at is, okay, well, what if one part of this galvanic cell is not under one molar solutions or not at one ATM gases? What is the new 
cell potential. So let's look at an example. Okay. We have a reaction. Okay. It's been balanced. I can see that. And the question is, predict how the cell potential when it's not under standard state conditions compares to when it is. So for example, all right, let's look at this. What is going to happen to this galvanic cell if the manganese ion molarity is still at one? We've, we've left that unchanged. That's typical. But, the, but now the aluminum ion concentration is not, no longer at standard state. It's at 1.5. Now we are still at 25 degrees Celsius. So first thing that I'm going to do before we do any number crunching of any kind is I'm going to write out the Q expression for this reaction. Guys, remember solids and liquids are not included in a Q expression. So my Q expression, just so I can have that, is going to look like this. The manganese ion is in the denominator and it's going to be raised to the third power. So that's going to become important in just a minute. Okay. Now, we're not actually being asked to calculate anything, guys, we're, because we don't even know what the standard E cell is. We don't know what that standard cell potential. We're just asked to predict, will this new cell potential be less than, greater than, equal to? And we're going to use that Nernst equation. So I'm just going to re rewrite it so we have it in front of us. Minus RT. Okay, and let's fill in what we can. All right, so we don't know what this new cell potential is. We don't know what the standard cell potential is either, but that's okay. I'll show you in just a second. And let's fill in these numbers. As we said, R is that gas constant, so that's 8.314. 25 Celsius, that's 298 Kelvin. Okay. And I'm looking up at that balanced equation, and I can tell if you sort of worked backwards and see what are the, the two individual half reactions, I can see that the number of electrons that was canceled out would have been six. And then Faraday's constant. Okay, now let's fill in these, new, these molarities into that Q expression. So the aluminum ion is in the numerator, so that's 1.5, and that's being squared. And then the manganese is still 1.0, and that's being raised to the third power. Okay, so. We're going to do a lot of number crunching here in our calculators. Again, I don't have a number for this. And I still don't have a number for my standard cell potential, but that's OK. OK, so first things first, this whole fraction RT divided by NF, I put that into my calculator and I get this. And then the natural log of the new values into my Q expression, I get this. So let me bring this down. 0 0.00347. Okay. So do I have an actual number to report here for that non-standard cell potential? No, I don't, but just from, let me change color here, just from this right here, I can see that whatever my standard cell potential was, because I'm subtracting a number, I know that my new non-standard cell potential is going to be less. So let me just write a statement here. E cell will be less than the standard. E cell. Okay. 
And guys, again, you have this Nernst equation available to you on your formula sheet, so you might as well use it. When you are asked a question like this, whether it's in multiple choice or free response, math is always you know, a really definitive way to explain something. If you can show mathematically that yes, this non-standard E-cell is going to be less using math, that's always the best way to go, okay? So what this is saying is, by having a higher concentration of that aluminum ion in one side of our galvanic cell, you know, so in that aluminum half cell, increasing the molarity of aluminum ion is gonna cause our battery to be putting out fewer volts than it was before. We're sort of hindering our galvanic cell, if you will. Okay, so I want you guys to pause your video and try this one and see how you do with it. It's the same process. Okay, so once again, why are we even using that Nernst equation? Because guys, the molarities are not at standard state. If both of these were at one molar, I would not need to use that Nernst equation, okay? But we are gonna need to use it. So I filled in all of my values here, okay? And this is what I end up getting, all right? And I'm hoping mathematically you can then see that making these changes to these molarities, making them not at standard condition in this example is actually going to cause the new cell potential to be greater than it was under standard state conditions. This is like making your battery, on, putting your battery on steroids, if you will. We're making some changes to cause us to get a greater amount of voltage than we were before. Okay, so let's look at this in a multiple choice setting. Okay, so we have a balanced redox reaction for this galvanic cell. Okay, and it says, which of the following occurs if the silver electrode is made larger? Okay, well, we're making a change. Okay, so in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I might, might need to use that Nernst equation let me think about what the Q expression for this particular setup is going to be. So I have a cadmium ion on the product side, silver ion on the reactant side, and I'm going to square that. Remember, we eliminate solids and liquids. And here's the thing, guys. What they're saying in this particular question is we're just simply gonna make that electrode larger, okay? Like larger in size, larger in mass. Well, do you see solid silver in that Q expression? I don't, okay? Which means if the Q is unaffected, then the cell potential is gonna be unaffected by this change. So here's my answer, okay? Increasing the size of the electrode is not gonna do anything to the output of this galvanic cell. All right. Let's look at another one, okay? Same question, same reaction, same setup. This time it says, which of the following occurs if 50 milliliters of a two molar cadmium nitrate solution is added to the left cell? So the cadmium half cell. So once again, let me just write out that Q expression, we had the cadmium ion in the numerator and we had the silver ion in the denominator. And what this is saying is we are changing that cadmium solution on the left half cell, not from, it was one molar, that's standard. Now it's actually two molar, okay? So we've made this the numerator of the Q expression is now greater, okay? And guys, if you were to plug this, you know, plug these numbers in to the Nernst equation, I'm not, I'm gonna skip through that. But if you were to plug that in and do the same process that we just did on two slides back, here's what you would see. You are gonna see a voltage that is 
less than it was. Okay, so this, these kinds of questions come up in multiple choice. They also, of course, come up in free response. If it's a free response question, I would absolutely show those calculations that we just did a moment ago. But you can also see this in a multiple choice kind of setting, something like this. Okay, so having a greater concentration of the cadmium ion solution causes the voltage to decrease but remain above zero. Okay. Now, um, this is a practice question, which I would like you guys to pause your video. It's sort of going through these processes that we have been looking at. I want you guys to pause your video and give this one a try. All right, so let's take a look at this problem piece by piece. So we have a galvanic cell constructed with one half cell containing solid copper and uh, copper ion, copper plus two. The other half cell has tin, a tin electrode and a tin ion solution, tin plus two. And the question says that we've constructed this cell not with one molar solutions, but with 0.5 molar solutions on both sides. And it says, is the cell potential of this non-standard cell, because it's not at one molar, greater than, less than, or equal to the cell potential if it was under standard state conditions? Justify your answer. Now there's something that's a little bit, um, there's, there's something you have to do that you're not exactly directed to do. You would need to go and look up the half reactions for these two half cells, the a copper half reaction and the tin half reaction, figure out which one you need to flip, okay? And the reason is, it's, you don't, it's not that you need to do that so that you can get that standard cell potential. That's not why. The reason you need to go and look up the half cell reactions, figure out which one needs to be flipped, is so that you can know what the balanced overall redox equation looks like. Why do you need that? Because you need to know what the Q expression is in order to answer this question. Okay, so let me just review that for just one second. I went and I looked up the two half cell, the two half reactions, copper and tin, I could tell that the tin half reaction was the one that needed to be flipped because remember galvanic cells have to have a positive total. And once I figured that out, now I know what my overall balanced reaction is. And since we're under non-standard conditions, it's this Q that's really important to me when I'm thinking about that Nernst equation, okay? So here's the thing. Is this non-standard cell potential greater than, less than, or equal to the cell potential, cell potential under standard conditions? And the answer is equal to. Because the concentrations of the tin ion and the copper ion are both 0.5, okay, in that Q expression, Q is still gonna be equal to one. So in this case, the non-standard cell potential is actually unchanged, okay? But you would need to figure out that balanced equation, show your Q expression in order to explain this fully, okay? Now, does that mean that this galvanic cell is totally the same as a standard galvanic cell? Well, not really, okay? So part B says, both the standard and non-standard cells can be used to power an electronic device. Would the non-standard cell, with the 0.5 solutions, 0.5 molar, would it power the device for the same time, longer time, or shorter time as compared to the standard cell? I'm hoping you said a shorter amount of time. That non-standard cell does not have as simply as many ions as the standard cell. It's a, there's simply fewer particles because there's, the molarity is less. So it's gonna power that device for a shorter amount of time because the supply of copper ions is gonna be exhausted more quickly due to the, the lesser molarity. 
If you're wondering why did I focus in on just the copper ions, that's because the copper ion is one of my reactants, okay? So we need that in order to, for this reaction to occur. So because there are simply fewer of those reactant copper ions, the cell is going to run out, die uh, faster than a standard cell. Okay, now, if any of you were wondering, every time we did these non-standard conditions for a galvanic cell, why were we using that Nernst equation every time? Why didn't we just talk about Le Chatelier's principle? You know, if you add more of this particular ion or you lessen the amount of this solution, why doesn't it just shift? And guys, we absolutely cannot use Le Chatelier's principle when we're talking about electrochemical cells. And I'll tell you why. Did you notice that we were always talking about Q in that Nernst equation? Guys, remember what Q is. It's that reaction quotient. Q is set up the same way as the equilibrium uh, constant K but Q uses conditions that are not at equilibrium. And guys, that's really key here. It's important that you understand that a running galvanic cell, a battery that is putting out some voltage, is not at equilibrium. And that's why we can't use Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle runs under the understanding that a system was at equilibrium, you caused a disturbance to push it out of equilibrium, and then it will come back. That's not the situation with a galvanic cell. When a galvanic cell is running, or as it runs, a galvanic cell is approaching equilibrium. A working battery is one that is racing towards equilibrium. Okay, so a cell potential, any kind of voltage coming out of a galvanic cell that is anything other than zero is a working battery, a running battery. So a dead battery, and I just mentioned that a minute ago, is nothing more than a galvanic cell that has reached equilibrium. Okay, let me just let that sink in for a minute. A battery that has juice in it is simply a galvanic cell that is approaching equilibrium. And once it gets there, it's done. The battery is dead. There's no more voltage coming out. And then we wouldn't be talking about Q anymore. We'd be talking about the equilibrium constant K. All right. Speaking of which, all right. Let's think about this Nernst equation, okay? If, let me change colors here, this guy is equal to zero, and this is no longer Q, but K in fact, okay? I can simplify this equation a little bit. It's gonna look like that. Now guys, I want you to be aware that this second equation in orange here, that is not on your formula sheet, okay? But you don't need to have it. I mean, if you wanted to do some calculations, you absolutely could. Just remember that you need to plug in zero for this non-standard E cell. If you're at equilibrium, and then this wouldn't be Q anymore, it would be K, all right? But essentially, guys, when we're talking about a dead battery, we're talking about a battery that has reached equilibrium. The two cell compartments have the same free energy. And I wanted you all to be aware of that. Now, I'm hoping that I don't scare you off here, but I just want you all to appreciate the relationships that we now have, okay? At the beginning of unit nine, we learned about Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy, of course, we talked about the word favorability a lot, is a process thermodynamically favorable, yes or no. And we related Gibbs free energy to equilibrium with 
this equation that you do not have to memorize. That is on your formula sheet. And guys, let's just review. This is a good chance for us to pause and review. Remember that a favorable process means Gibbs free energy, that delta G is negative. And when you go through the math, that ends up meaning that the K, the equilibrium constant, is going to be greater than 1. A negative delta G, of course, means the forward reaction is favored. K equal comes out e being greater than 1 because products are favored. If delta G comes out to be a positive value, that means the forward reaction is not favored, which means the K value is going to come out to be less than 1 <clears throat> because reactants are favored. So remember that we had that connection between Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. Okay, Then, in the middle of Unit 9, we started learning about electrochemical cells, okay, galvanic cells in particular, okay, and we can relate, we related that to Gibbs free energy with this equation, which you don't have to memorize, it is on your formula sheet, and let's review, okay, remember a negative delta G means whatever process we're looking at is thermodynamically favored, and that came out with positive cell potentials, and that mathematically works out in that formula in front of us. In the last subunit in Unit 9, 9.11, we're going to be looking at something called electrochemical cells, where their cell potentials are, in fact, negative, which mathematically means we're going to get a positive delta G. Those are electrochemical cells that are not thermodynamically favored. And then to something we just looked at just now was the relationship between a galvanic cell that has reached equilibrium, and we can connect that with this equation. Now, this one that I just circled, is that on your equation sheet? No, it is not. I doubt you would ever need to use it, but you can get it from the Nernst equation, just setting that E cell non-standard, set that equal to zero. And remember, it, if we're at equilibrium, it wouldn't be Q anymore, it would be K. So you can get that equation, but you certainly don't need to memorize it. Okay, so I want you to just imagine the possibilities here, especially on the AP exam in a free response situation. You could be connecting thermodynamics to equilibrium, to electrochemistry. I mean, within one free response question, you could have all of these major concepts linked together. And I just wanted you all to appreciate those connections and be aware that you can make those connections. So hopefully I haven't freaked you out too much uh, thinking about those major concepts and how they could be connected but I do think it's important to recognize those connections. So I hope you have learned a little something today, and I look forward to seeing you next time.